And so, no, you can't just pose like Wonder Woman and wonder why your bench press isn't going up. Coach Greg, in today's video, I'm going to do some myth busting, starting out with Tony Robbins. You heard of this guy, some motivational speaker with like a large following? Well, he claims that by standing like a superhero, that you can improve your testosterone levels by 20%, increase decision-making in business by 33%. He says it's been proven. That's right, there's proof. It's proven. It has to be true. It's like a law, like the law of thermodynamics. It's not been proven. Oh, but it was done by Harvard. You really think that you can just pick out a study from Harvard? And it has to be true. It's proof. And so let's hear it from the horse's mouth himself. I've been teaching for years that a radical change in your body instantly changes your biochemistry. 38 years I've taught it. Two years ago at Harvard, they did a study, scientifically proven what I've been teaching all these decades, where they, they call it power postures. Yeah, the and Wonder say, Woman stance. Yeah, standing right? like Wonder yeah. Woman or Superman for two minutes. Yep. Or, or like you see guys like this, pull back like that for two minutes, literally increases your testosterone in your biochemistry within two minutes by 20%. It drops cortisol by 18%, which is the stress hormone, and increases your chance of taking a more risky behavior, which is what's required of a leader, by 33%, two minutes. Well, isn't that fantastic? Increase by 20%. So if I make all my videos like this, I get jacked. Right? Wrong. It's wrong. He'd been preaching this for years. He found one study by Harvard with a small sample size, never considered what factors could have led to these studies. And so, was it actually true? Well, research wanted to see if it was. So they did a much larger study and took those considerations into account. And guess what? It bullshit. Wasn't raising testosterone. Wasn't true. The effect of postural power displays on hormonal levels and decision-making has recently been challenged. Challenged because everyone knows that one study doesn't prove anything. Whenever you hear the word prove, you know you got to be skeptical. While Carney et al. 2010 found that holding brief postural displays of power leads to increased testosterone, decreased cortisol, and greater economic risk-taking, this failed to replicate in a recent high-powered study failed to replicate. As in the proven study there, it wasn't proved after all. We found no main effect of pose type on testosterone, cortisone, risk, or feelings of power. And so think of it. You just won a competition. You're excited, proud, and you stand with a cool looking pose. You're all relaxed. Uh, yeah, I'm the champion. And your testosterone's up 20%. Is it from the pose or the fact that you just won the competition? Or hot looking girl walks by and you change your stance. Oh, I want her to be impressed by me. You change your stance and so your testosterone goes up. Is that from the stance or the fact that that hot looking girl is in your vicinity? Do they not consider these factors? I feel like research is so much simpler, but people overcomplicate it. They don't look at the little details, the small things that really do matter. And so no, you can't just pose like Wonder Woman and wonder why your bench press isn't going up. Next. And wait till I break this one down for you. Telling you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Cleaning burns 140,000 calories yearly as new study uncovers surprising workout. Cleaning at home 140,000 calories works out to 383 calories a day. They're saying, oh, you don't like working out? You don't have to. You can just clean around the house. 383 calories. That's equivalent of a 150 pound man walking four miles. That's a very fast walk for an hour. Do you really think you're gonna take the same degree of calorie burn or cardiovascular impact from doing some cleaning, some laundry, some wiping the dishes, some vacuuming, ironing? Really, that that is going to be the equivalent of walking very fast for four miles. Fancy burning 139,898 calories a year? Keeping a tidy home is a big workout, a new study has found. And so you gotta ask yourself, where do they come up with these numbers? Especially being this precise, 139,898. Did they actually track someone for an entire year and say clean and calculate the calories burnt during that entire year of house cleaning? 
And if so, how did they actually track those calories? How did they decide? Person standing there folding laundry, what do they do? They have a heart rate monitor on them and they can track the calories. Guess what? It's not accurate. Were they wearing a Fitbit? Fitbit said so? No, it's not accurate. You can't say this is how many calories you're burning from doing these chores around the house. If this were actually true, it would burn off 40 pounds of fat from doing house chores. Does anyone believe this? I mean, if they were surveying molly maids or people that do cleaning for a living, maybe that would be true. But 383 calories a day, that is a lot, especially for smaller people. Perhaps you're a smaller female, 120 pounds. You're not gonna burn even half of those calories cleaning your house. But if you're 500 pounds, cleaning 100 miles an hour, multiple homes, of course you're gonna burn more. And here's an interesting fact of which doesn't apply to me. In addition to shedding pounds, 60% think there are additional benefits to cleaning, finding it a great way to de-stress after work and switch off from a busy day. If I got back from a busy day of work and I knew I had to clean enough to burn off 383 calories in a day, that's more stress. I gotta work all day, come home and work again, clean in the house. How is that de-stressing? De-stressing, I want to go work out, lift some weights, do some cardio, bike race, or maybe even watch TV, relax, sit back. I don't want to have to work more. So how is that a de-stress? It also emerged 59% feels it helps them lead a healthier lifestyle with clean kitchens resulting in fewer takeaways. Well, I'm gonna counter that argument by saying if I had to clean the entire house every day, it's gonna to lead to a more unhealthy lifestyle because I'm not gonna have the time to go to the freaking gym. I'll be cleaning the house all day. Why do you think we hire people to do that? So we have free time so that we can do what we want, to race that bike, to go lift some weights, go for a hike. And so if you have to work all day and come home and then clean your entire house, burn 383 calories, you really think you're gonna have the time to now go and exercise, to take the dogs for a walk and so on? Of course not. Three quarters, 77% of those who habitually clean their homes say it puts them in a better mood with more than half saying they enjoy cleaning their home. I got to get you over here cleaning. You enjoy it, you like it, oh, it's fun times now, washing the dishes, mopping the floor, can't wait to clean the toilets, it's amazing. Unclogging that toilet and scrubbing out the oven, oh, that's fantastic work, love it. Cleaning up the poop that the dogs leave outside, oh, I can't wait, such a de-stress. What kind of stressful lives are you living when you think that cleaning your house is a de-stress? You're having more stress than me. And get this quote, and this is what really pisses me off. Misleading people like this. Listen to this quote. If you enjoy having a clean and calm home, but dislike exercise, then doing a bit of housework might be the healthy habit for you. Really? If you don't like exercise, they don't suggest finding a different form of exercise that you would enjoy, that you would like, that would keep you busy, that would elevate your heart rate. They say, hey, don't worry about that. Don't need exercise. Just do a bit of housework. You know, fold the laundry, put away the dishes, vacuum, iron your clothes. Is this a workout for Grandma Josephine? I mean, if you're over 90, sure, this can be the workout that you need. But for the majority of the population, the people reading these studies, they're not 95 years of age and ironing your clothes is not enough to get a great and healthy workout. It can be a full body workout as you reach for dusty corners or high up shelves. So you stretch a little bit to reach the top of the shelf to dust. That does not give you a great workout. Perhaps minor amounts of increased range of motion and flexibility, but that does not constitute a well-rounded training program. It's worth in the prayer freaking workout and the biceps and the triceps and the triceps workout and the bicep remember that workout and you will really feel the triceps because because then you really feel it in the triceps remember that workout it's worse than that and so then they post a chart saying how many calories you're going to burn doing these various activities and i'm looking and i'm like there's no way you're burning that many calories doing these things like, think of it. Do you really think you're burning more calories when ironing than you are when you're going for a walk? Like, some of these numbers make no sense. And so, if you're drastically overestimating the calories you're burning during a chore, then you're probably going to be more likely to do it. But then you're going to think, ah, I did all these chores. I ironed for an hour. So, I burned off all these calories eating a cheeseburger. And then what happens is you eat the cheeseburger. 
and then you don't lose weight, you gain it, and then you say, guess what? Sea code doesn't work. I tried dieting, calories in, calories out, tracked everything. I gained weight, doesn't work, probably hormones. And then you're going to have plastic surgeons and other doctors and so on saying, no, it isn't calories in, calories out because hormonal changes, you know, it's not your fault. You want to hear, it's not your fault. You need to hear, yeah, it's your fault. Do something about it. And so that is what these studies are freaking doing. They're hurting us more than they're helping. Telling people to do chores instead of exercise. How is that good? Telling us that we can stand with upright posture and that we can get more testosterone, build muscle, make better decisions. No, it's not true. And so the next time you see a study saying it proves something, well, think again ending it here. And while I have you here, please join my newsletter subscriber list. We're giving away five free recipes. Also a free training program, free nutrition program. That's right. Free, not ready quite yet. Soon to be giving it away to everyone. Absolutely free, no extra charge. And we also have free weekly giveaways. And so please join the nearly 200,000 newsletter subscribers by clicking that link in the bio. And while you're there, harder than last time supplements, click the link in the description. Don't forget the cookbooks, low calorie, delicious recipes, lose weight, keep it off the rest of your life. The training books, coaching plans by me and my team. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment for the algorithm. Don't forget about the bloops. You can't miss those. And until next time, I am out.